global impact of political tensions and diplomatic relations. On Saturday, the 13th of July, in the United States, former President Donald Trump narrowly escaped assassination. The incident has sent shockwaves through the nation, prompting heightened security measures and raising serious questions about political tensions ahead of upcoming elections. Turning to Nigeria, the United Arab Emirates has lifted its visa ban on Nigeria, marking a pivotal moment in diplomatic relations. This decision is viewed as a triumph of soft power diplomacy, aimed at fostering closer economic ties and cultural exchange between the two countries. Also, there have been great concern on the state of the economy by Nigerians, as the federal government plans to distribute 20 trucks of rice to different states in a bid to cushion the economic hardship effect on Nigerians. But as much as it's laudable, it's not as important as stabilizing the economy for Nigerian businesses to thrive effectively and also enhancing food security, especially in the area of security in farmlands and production and distribution of foods. Here are some key points to take. Enhance security protocol and its political tensions. Prioritize transparency and accountability in governance. Strengthen diplomatic efforts for economic and cultural partnership. Well, you know, with the previous segment, we said so much about the, the assassination or the, let's say, Trump escaping, narrowly escaping assassination. And yeah. in the process, some persons were injured in the rally. Died. Someone even died. Yeah. We're yeah. The family. Yeah. Now, we said so much about that. We're trying to tell America, cool down, yeah. vote, don't fight. Mm -hmm. No, we are not endorsing political violence. We're saying yeah. vote, don't fight. But uh, away from that, still on that same issue, the electoral scene in the U.S. preparing for the election. You know there have been clamor on the on the, the president to step down based on the state of his health. You know it was just for, um, known that uh, he contracted COVID nineteen. I think that was uh, within this, the week or so, a wow. uh, couple of days. So there have been great concern even in this party mm -hmm. that okay, you are having what is the state of your health? Yeah. So, like, I want to know, what is the possibility of, do you think the president or whoever candidate should be very transparent about their health for election, for governance, effective governance and electoral processes? And also, what measures should be taken to encourage women to participate in electoral processes, decision and leadership making, and contesting for rules, top rules, in the U.S. and elsewhere? Ah, this this is a, this sounds like so many issues Trump all put, issues. put together. <laughs> you know, yeah, Trump 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 load of issues. Uh, well, we thank God that Trump survived. If he was an African now, a Nigerian, we do survival party. You know, would have collected our show to do yes. the you know yes and and stuff like that. But again, we are happy. But um, on to Biden. Um, I think if you're people's leader or you're serving people at that level, it's very important to share the state of your health. But what if you do not know the state of your decline? Wow. So if he feels he's okay, but because he's 81, and we keep forgetting, yes. Biden did not grow old in front of our eyes. It's not like that case where, you know, Nigerians believe that the particular president was cloned. So they didn't just bring a new... A uh, human or humanoid to, he has been old. He was old when he became president. He is progressively getting older as all of us are from four years ago when he was uh, president. Unfortunately for America or interestingly, they have this two aged gentlemen vying to become their president. Now, if it was a night, remember the time we had, we've had a few of our presidents who have had issues with their health. And we have people making pronouncements that they will keep ruling, even from the hospital yeah. bed, even if they are wearing oxygen, they're the only one. It's, it's nice to see, it's even funny to see that this is not an African sit down, I want to hold on to power problem. The quest for power is a very human thing. Not yes. It's not a Nigerian yes. thing. Yes. It's, it's a very human thing. And there are people around you who will support you. And they start to question their own um, interests. Mm -hmm. 
Now the family, his immediate family is saying, stay, you can do it. You're wondering, why won't you just let grandpa come home and rest? Yes. But you know all the accoutrements of power, you would still have it. So I think for that particular reason, a lot of people will not want uh, Biden to go. But his supporters, unfortunately, are now divided. You have a Trump that is out there with, you know, things that we never imagined that a U.S. president or somebody who even has an interest in politics in the United States of America would do. Trump has done everything. Uh, there were a few contenders way back when who even the whiff of controversy around them is enough for them to lose the ticket. Donald Trump should be studied. You know, this issue of him being Teflon Don, that nothing sticks to him. He is an enigma that should be, he has done everything possible. This is a guy that has so many court cases. He has an indictment. He has been, he, he's uh, been found guilty on particular issues. Yet everybody is clamoring well, for him to be president. So with him and all his scandal, the Republicans are standing by him. Biden's crime is that he is getting older in front of everybody's eyes and he's getting older and slower in front of everybody's eyes and when he when they were asking for this debate to happen which was what showed him to the rest of the world they believed that biden was going to trump trump but unfortunately so they say be careful what you wish for so when that happened it showed everybody that oh no there's something wrong with Biden. There's something wrong with Grandpa. So, ah, there's problem. So we're asking him to come back. Let us put our house in order. However, the Democrats must be aware that the last time they tried to change um, a president, a presidential candidate, just a few months yeah, yeah. To, to this, they lost. They lost. So that is why they are wondering, if we do it now, what's going to happen to us? But if Trump stays and if Biden stays, there is a chance that they are going to lose. Now, okay, at the end of um, last week, they say he has COVID. And we're looking at him old and feeble. That's the optics we're presented yes. with. We're seeing Trump who's been shot with blood on his face yes. during yes. fight, fight. So just looking at the two optics, it's just unfair that by, under Biden, America has actually done well. However, Trump, you know, the optics surrounding Trump is just of a powerful man. Mm -hmm. If you listen to his speech at the, at the RNC convention, it didn't make any sense. He's not coherent, but hey, he's working on his two legs. He's doing that. He's got, and now he's wearing this badge of survival on his ear and all of that. So. I think life and fate has a very interesting way of doing things. But for those of us, you know, um, I think that this should encourage us to look at democracy in a way that, you know, the countries should be able to develop their own kind of democracy. America's democracy is not even near perfect. It's not near. I think America is the only country where you will win by popular votes and lose to a lecturer college where it's just a handful of people. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense to anybody, but that is their country. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Biden now has to decide between his personal interest, which is legitimate, mm -hmm. and the interest of his party and the country at large. Well, you know, in the course of your, your every your thoughts, you were talking about American president were under Biden. You know, some persons in America have that when America is lightly divided now, some persons feel that Trump was better off, especially in international handling and all yes, these yes, things, diplomacy, international and the hard, or the soft power diplomacy or whatever, the hard power diplomacy, okay. But, you know, divergent view. Some will say, no, uh, Biden was better. Some say I, Trump. I'm talking from, this, from, uh, their, Trump stock, stock, from their stock exchange yeah. and, the, and the report at the end of every month of uh, employment. That's, I'm, I'm being factual. I'm yeah, not I, I get, sentimental it. about it. So, yes, in every society, you always say, oh, this person did better yeah, or that person. Yeah, Look at palliative now. Some people will get a idea. Some will not get. So for those ones who receive it, they'll say, yay, they gave me. The ones who didn't get to say, yeah, like me, I'll that. say, I have never even seen a green of rice mm -hmm. from them. So yeah, yeah. that's just so, talking about in, international. In the case okay. of, sorry, I'm um, In the case of um, you asking about um, Biden's health, like she said, interest 
is a game for nations. Like interest is always that present factor. Sure. You cannot exclude it when it comes to politics, Same. when it comes to international um, um, interactions and when it comes to politics. You understand? Biden might mean well for America, but he's not, he might not be considering his health. Mm. Like there is more like this um, difference between Biden and Trump that Trump looks strong, like yeah, she says, strong, strong, showing strength, position. while Biden's right. health is like slowly declining as the day goes by. You understand? So my opinion is that in the end, everything should be of the interest of country, mm -hmm. of citizens, and also yourself. You will not mm -hmm. exclude yourself because it's like reality. I'm a realist, you get. Sure, sure. So, so that's speaking just... Speaking about interests of nations, I was going to get to your point on this international relations, so far diplomacy. This issue of visa ban. You remember yeah. what happened in 2023 during the, I think in Somalia, when the two generals were at war. Nigerians fled, right? To neighboring countries. Yes. And they actually shot their borders against Nigerians, treated them badly. And this is a Nigeria that is so, we are so we're called giant of, of Africa. We tried to get involved. You see what President Michel did like, in Ethiopia. Yes. He went to Ethiopia to mediate, mediate exactly. during the civil war. Like, now, this same Ethiopia did not allow us coming. We were fleeing from now and then, then taking it down to what happened again. Uh, visa ban. Okay, now, okay, now, okay. Why, I would like to chip in something there. Okay, take for instance, during um, Obasanjo's time, when he came during the civilian regime, Nigeria was in a, is in a pariah state, in a state whereby nobody wants to associate being caught out with right. um, military junta and all that. So when OBJ came, uh, President Obasanjo, former <laughs> President Obasanjo came in, he did what they call shuttle diplomacy. He was going from countries to countries to bring out Nigeria from that darkness. Mm -hmm. So, individual in power to understand what international diplomacy is all about. Mm -hmm. You cannot come from a place of um, rigidness, not knowing what diplomacy is and say you want to start um, operating with sanctions, using sanctions, building counter -sanctions, sanctions, counter -sanctions, counter -sanctions, counter -sanctions, sanctions, using diplomacy, soft power, hard power, when you don't even know what soft power is mm -hmm. to start with. So, so, so far? what is a soft power is more like using, um, like using mild approach towards resolving issues when it comes to international relations and all that. You get you could use maybe soft sanctions, maybe economic sanctions. Like what's it done on Russia? Yes, economic sanctions, sanctions and stuff like that. Not using that preemptive military strikes and all that. You get so in terms of this uh, UAE ban. Uh, I think 2022 or so, they reduced Emirates' um, flying time from 21 times a week to once a week. Yeah, the sanctions to that effect. I think that was what really led, culminated into this resolve. But at the same time, you ask yourself, how long are we going to be at the mercy mm. of all yeah, other countries? Yeah. It's an image problem, right? It's an image problem. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's, uh, I don't think that, I mean, if, if you're doing... Uh, saying that you're not telling the truth how it is or presenting the facts from all sides. Nigerians, our behavior in Dubai was, was atrocious. Yes, it atrocious. was. Atrocious. And you cannot have people who posture themselves as peaceful, uh, a peaceful uh, country where they depend a lot on tourism. And then you have Nigerians coming there too. There was this particular, particularly terrible video where we saw people running around, around the streets, streets. Yeah. yes okay. with yeah. life and no, you know where you know but where you I know where I'm coming from part of the that last, was part of what the last broke the car yeah. again we were owing them and money was essential they were not they were not remitting their monies to them so Def how were yes. they going to to continue now, now, see in diplomacy we keep you know every time we come and we say oh uh, the country has to do this there are other countries that say we should not come because when Nigerians go there to do they, parties, exactly. they pay deposits, destroy stuff, and they run. <laughs> the deposit will not cover it and all that. So we have certain behaviors that we need to correct when we go outside. I know, but not only Nigeria has that. Other countries, no, no, they do talking, that. I'm, I don't belong to another country. I know, but this what, is what I'm trying to say, what I'm Nigeria, trying to say, no, what I'm trying to say, like in Kenya, about Nigeria. No, why are they single? I'm talking of those countries. Okay. See, Why see, because they can win sanctions. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not criminals themselves. Politics is not fair. Diplomacy is still not fair. 
you get okay take for instance um in kenya i'm not just going to be detailed about it there was a story about um some certain british soldiers because they have their camp in there they molested you get and raped so, so why are why are kenyans uh, why are kenyans not sanctioning the british government exactly mm. why you get so it's a it's a game of play they are getting yeah. that is part of what <laughs> i'm saying no, no but see it's a game of politics a game of power who, who, has, more power? who has more who power who is going to more? wield more who? sanctions Okay, let me ask you a question. Nobody's, nobody's nobody's Imagine perfect. some group of Americans yeah. go to UAE and mess up, commit crime, like what happened in China. You saw what happened, it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in China, some MBA, that was really the time of Trump era. Some young MBA did mm -hmm. their basketball teams, uh, young persons. They went yes, to a particular store, broke into the store, store mm -hmm. because they felt nobody was watching them. They were camera, it was actually an automated store. You were supposed to buy, drop your money, pay, and go. Nobody is automated. They left. Later, the camera picked them up and they were arrested because Donald Trump was in China at that time. He had to talk to the president. Please, release those boys. I'll take them back to America. He actually sent them back to America. They, they were arrested. And then when they came back to America, they actually apologized. They apologized to the president, to the country, and to their parents for letting them down. Mm -hmm. The question is, if it was a sort of Nigerian, Chanson. Are you, so what, what have you forgotten why we are here? Our president went there last year okay. and brokered this peace or this um, rapprochement or whatever they'll call it in diplomacy. Our president went and felt, okay, why would our citizens not go to Dubai? The things they are gaining, our businesses and stuff like that, even just that cordial relationship for tourism and business. Our president still, the way Trump did his own, our president went. But the, 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 the problem again had to do with them not getting their money. Okay. And it's a, money it's a big problem. Money problem. Money finance. problem um, when we are talking, yes, we're Nigerian, so we try to like uh, soft brush it, but again, we're the only ones that can tell ourselves the truth. Some places where we go, our problems that we carry, what we present in that place, it's crazy. So I'm not going to speak about what Ghanaians do or what Zimbabweans do. I'm a Nigerian, so this is my problem. It affects me directly because I'm a Nigerian. So my president has not done, uh, President Tinubu has not done anything different from what Trump did. It's just that he has shot them, they'll get their money. Okay. And as soon as they were getting that money, they loosened up things. So now the question is, what do we need to go to the UAE? I'm not even sure because there's this report here. And there's, there's that report different there. Reports. So yes. we do not know. The ones that said, oh, they're going to pay over 640,000 naira. The, the people said, no, that has UAE said we don't know anything about that so we are yet to, to find out and they'll tell us this is the true um, state of affairs if you want to go to Dubai I don't know but I just feel that every country will look after their own yes. if you choose not to look after your yeah, people your nobody problem. is going to do exactly. it for you so all this one they did this to Nigeria what is Nigeria doing for Nigerians in the diplomatic circle right. we have had an interesting session thank you for that I believe uh, viewers are there will learn and wherever their views are, we will agree with us that we have to do better as a nation. So, openness is Bola Yaya after the break. Just stay with us.